Meet Joseph A. Erickson. He was the eighth president of the Boston Federal Reserve Bank. He left the Federal Reserve in 1961. That was the year I was born, actually. And he served there for 12 years. And he had quite a bit of um, things that he did in his life. One of the things that he did, he was the uh, member, a member of the Reparation Division of the American Peace Commission after serving as a lieutenant in the U.S. Army during World War I. He has his bachelor's degree from Harvard University. And all of these things I tried to put into this allegorical portrait of Joseph that I am creating for the Langham Hotel in Boston. It's a commission that I got where I'm doing eight portraits and his is one of the eight that are 30 inches wide and 40 inches tall. And I'm thrilled to pieces about this commission. So don't get me wrong, I'm, I, I, I love doing this, but I have to say this has been a tough week. Joseph fought me like no other. And when you look at the painting, I'll get out of the way so you can see the whole thing, there's not a whole lot of elements really in it. Um, I've got the crimson curtain because that's the color for Harvard University where he got his degree. I've got a mint green clock. Remember those, the, everything in the 1960s, the mint green, like the bathtubs and everything were that color. And I remember these clocks when I was a kid uh, being where you do the time punch. I remember those in some of the factories around the Detroit area where I grew up. And I've got the minute hand pointing to 12 because he was a Federal Reserve president uh, for 12 years. And then the eight is because he was the eighth president. He's also got eight buttons on both his vest and on his overcoat here. Um, but, you know, and, and then the, the blue, the light blue, that's sort of a uh, allegorical color for peace because he was involved in the Peace Commission. But in general, there's not a whole lot going on here. I used the composition of John Singleton Copley's portrait of, Ep Ep what's his name? Um, let me check here. Epi's Sergeant the Second. And that was the composition that I used. And when you're using the composition from a master and you're doing basically a master copy, but with your own spin on it, what you find is that some of the masters uh, had drawing mistakes, at least when you try to use their interpretation, it comes across as a drawing mistake. I'm not gonna say that John Singleton Copley did anything wrong, but in my painting, it looked very, very, very wrong when I used his composition for the sleeve down here and the hand, it made it, his hand look like it was broken. And you can Google his uh, portrait of uh, Epi's Sergeant the Second, but I really struggled. I mean, I redrew and repainted that hand so many times this week, trying to get it look like the bone structure and the anatomy was correct. And then the other thing that happened was I wanted for this portrait to be a little bit where the face was a little bit to the right and so that it would balance the um, the arm here on the left because all my portraits had to be have to be 40 by 30 not the same dimensions as what uh, John Singleton Copley did but I also wanted this to be a prominent um, clock in the uh, prominent element in the composition and so to begin with I had this clock bigger and it was a little bit more over to the right because it sort of balanced, I felt like the figure that way. But in doing that, it would have been kissing the frame. Of course, I drew it and painted it before I came to that conclusion, right? So that's like a basic 101 thing you should do is, and I even did a study that got a preliminary painting that got um, approved. And so I should have known better, but I didn't. And so I had to then go, okay, I can't have that kissing. I can't have that tangent. I mean. Probably they would have approved it and hung it and it would have been fine. But me personally, knowing that I had this piece out there, it would have always bothered me for the rest of my life hanging in the dining room of the Langham Hotel. I want these things to be as perfect as I can make them, right? So I moved the clock over. But then when I moved the clock over, it, it was hiding the curtain. Unless I made the curtain skinnier, it would hide a big part of that, that clock. And that didn't look right in the composition. So I'm like, I can't move the clock over. Let's go ahead and just make it smaller. But I didn't want to make it too small because I want it to be prominent, right? I mean, it's like the only 
um, uh, prop other than the table here, but it's the only prop that means anything in this composition. So this is what I've been wrestling with all week. And you have to understand, I'm an indirect painter. So for me, I like to paint very, very, very colorful underpaintings. And then I let that color show through. You can see that in some of his sleeve here where you can see the pinks and the greens and the yellows you know, showing through. Those colors in the underpaintings actually help me because then I don't have to think as much about color in the subsequent layers. I mean, I think about it, but I don't have to um, add it in the same ways that you do when you're painting opaquely or a la prima. Well, because I had to repaint these things so many times, then I was faced with, I, I mean, I could have sanded them down to the under and, and redone the underpainting and done all that, but then you get into some dicey stuff because I, I like to do my underpaintings, um, well, it just, trust me, it, it would have been uh, more difficult that way. And so the hand and this clock are painted a la prima or wet on wet or opaquely. And I had to match that, marry that to the way that I painted the rest of this piece. So for all these reasons, it was like, oh my gosh, people think that painting art is such a Zen experience and that you have such a relaxing job. Guys, I'm always problem solving and the engineer in me loves that, don't get me wrong. But the person in me that wants to get these done on time, knowing all the travel I have coming up and knowing all the other projects that I'm working on and knowing that I committed to deliver these in October to the Boston, um, uh, state of Boston or city of Boston, I just went crazy this, this week and <laughs> I did. I went on so many walks. I even had a group of ladies, artists painting stories. We have some shows that were a traveling show that we're planning and um, we got together the other day and I went like, you know what? I can't sit here in front of Joseph in my studio and have this Zoom call for two hours with you. I'm going on a walk. And so I talked to them uh, the whole time on my phone while I walked because I just had to de-stress to get, get my brain straight. So it's so funny to me that um, from where you guys sit, I probably look like I'm having the time of my life and just totally calm and everything is, you know, serene. And, and, and that's kind of the thing that we portray on social media, right? And even in my newsletters, I try and always keep everything positive and like, I'm like the duck where I'm just totally peaceful up on top. And then underneath, if you could only see my legs paddling, 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 paddling. So I thought I'd share that story with you. And I am really excited that this is the sixth piece that I have completed. You guys are seeing it before I've even put it in for approval. I have to let it dry now. And then I have to um, put a, a coat of, of, I'd like to spray it with a, protectorant that's a recoat or a rework uh, varnish that I use a spray varnish just to make the colors pop enough that the things that, that have sunken in and gotten more dull can then become more vibrant before I photograph it and then I will send it in for approval and hopefully they will approve it but man it was a fight and like I said it's one of the ones that has the fewest elements so it should have been an easy one this this guy should have happened really quick for me but he didn't so you never know, just goes to show. But thanks for watching and thanks for reading my newsletter. And I love engaging with you all. So please reply and tell me what's going on in your world. What fights are you fighting? And I hope you win. I mean, maybe it was a draw. I don't know. But <laughs> I feel like we duped it out and both of us came out with relatively few bruises. I, I thought about adding more blue to his face just to show that I won, but I didn't. <laughs> Have a wonderful day, and I hope you find lots of art and lots of beautiful images in your day today.